You want to read the claims that are stored in your JSON web token in your .NET Web API. Well, we've got two ways to do that, either the controller or if you want to use a better practice and not fat controllers, then you should definitely use a service for that. I will show you both cases in this tutorial here. So let's start. Now, real quick, what do we have here already? We have this auth controller and the important method in this auth controller here is uh, the create a token method because this thing creates a JSON web token and also sets some claims like a username and roles. And this is what I want to show you. How would you get that back from the web API? Now we can start in the auth controller. We already have a fed controller here. So let's just continue with that thing. Usually you might want to use a service for that, but Let's stick to the controller here for now. And uh, after that, I will also show you another way to get the claims. So the first thing here we can add is simply another method. And uh, that would be just a public action result returning a string. And for instance, get my name. And this thing now should simply return the name of the user who's currently authenticated and uh, we will get the name then with the help of the claim back to the method and in here now we can say var username is simply user right don't confuse it with this user here this is the user a claims principle and now here we can say identity this is not the identity of the claims principle and from that we can for instance get the name this could be null so what we can add to fix this real quick is simply the question mark and now very important is we have to add attributes the first one well this shall be a get method and the other one is authorized so only authorized users can access this method and with that we also have this user object there automatically. All right. And with that, we can return it. So let's just return. Okay. And then uh, maybe a new object because I want to add something afterwards. So new and then simply the username. And that's it. All right. So inside the controller, we just add another method, make sure that we use the authorized attribute here or above the class. And uh, with that, then the most important thing is to use this user object here of our, you see it here, controller base class. This is now available in this web API controller. From that, we can access the identity and then the name and the name then should be this thing here. All right, let's test that. I would say the app is already running, but let me just restart. There we are. So now let's just register a user real quick. Maybe the name is now different. It's Joel. And uh, we execute with that. We can log in. Code is available on GitHub. And I did this in uh, the videos before. So please have a look in the video description. So now we can authorize with that claim, uh, with that JSON web token. And now when we go here, this is now our get. Uh, get my name method here. You see it. No, no route is here. So this is just the route for that is just API and then the controller. And let's just try this out. We hit execute and we get username Joel. Isn't that nice? So this is how to access the name. But again, we can do more here. Of course, we can also check for the roles, for instance. So what we can do is we can now say var role is user and now I would use a different approach. I would say find first value. All right. So this is another way with that we can directly enter a string what claim we actually want to see. So in parentheses now we can say claim types and now we've got a bunch available and now name would be exactly the same thing as this statement here. Or what we can also do is we just check for the role. And now down here, we also add the role and the question mark here. Save that. Maybe restart the application manually. And uh, now we've still got our token here. So we authorize, try this out. And now we get Joel and admin.
isn't that nice. Now, the problem with that is that when we scroll further down, we actually have two roads and we only get admin back. Well, it's the first value, right? Find first value. So exactly what we actually wanted here, but let's change that to roads. And then we've got another function. So find all, and now this should work, right? Well, let's see. Save this, restart the application. And now when we try this one more time, we enter our barcode, hit authorize, and then we get an error. A possible object cycle was detected. Now, why is that? Well, here it gives us a hint with that subject field, maybe. Well, here we see find all returns a list of claims. What do the claims have? They have the claims identity subject and well, to make the long story short here, we get the value. So it's really the string and we are accessing the value object. Find first here, you can see it receives the claim and then a bit further down, we just access the value. And when we now also would only access the value, then we have no cycle problem here. So what we can do is we can definitely use our find all method, wait, roads, and now here find all, we say these are actually our role claims, right? And down here now we can say var roles is actually role claims and then select. And now with a lambda expression, we only want to get the value and then we turn this into a list. And with that, then we get a list of strings. So let's try that again. Find all re returns the complete claims in a list. And with uh, this little link function here, select, we go or we iter iterate through this list of claims and then only grab the value from that. Restart this and now when we try that, we get the username and then the array of our roles. All right, so please keep that in mind. So if you have a list of claims or of claim values, then there's a better way to get this. You can also do this in one single line, for instance, and then this should be the last one. World two, let's say, is then user claims again, where this time, let's put this in another line. And then here we say C, C type, for claims, right? Is claim types and then roads, for instance, or role. And from that then, we say, yep, the value and we turn this into a list. And here now let's just add the roles to save that. And now the last one, authorize, try this and you see the result is exactly the same. All right, so this is how you would get to the claims, but to make this or to use a a bit better practice, I suggest to add a service as well. So to do that, we just add a new folder here called the services. Maybe we will add more services here. And I also wanna add first an interface an I user service, for instance, and then also a class. So user service and this thing now implements the I user service. And in here, we've got one method, which is string get my name, for instance, and a little bit, all right. And let's also implement this thing here. And now here, this is now the big difference. We do not have the user object, but there is one thing that we can use to get the user object. And this is the HTTP context accessor. Now to be able to use that thing, we have to go to the program CS first. And now similar to all the other services, we have to add something here or register something. And that would be services and then add HTTP context accessor. 
see, you see it here, add the default implementation for the I HTTP context accessor service. And we're gonna inject this service in our user service, but we also have to register our user service. So builder services at scoped. And now here we say I user service, uh, user service. So using in essence, the repository pattern with dependency injection here. So whenever we want to inject the I user service, we need this implementation. We want that implementation. Talked about there way more and way more detail in uh, the last video, I guess, regarding ad scoped, ad transient, and ad singleton. And of course, in my courses. So if you want, have a look in the video description. So we saved that. And now we are able to first inject the HTTP context accessor in our user service. So here now, private read only I HTTP context accessor. This is the HTTP context accessor, really long name. And from that now we create a constructor with that thing injected. And now here we can pretty much do the same thing. Now first, let's say our result, only the name is first simply an empty string. But now what we can do is we can check if, uh, of course, we have an HTTP context accessor. Now HTTP context. And if this thing is not null, then we can access that with result first and now HTTP context accessor, HTTP context. And now we've got the user object. And that's exactly the same that we already had in our controller here, right? So the HTTP context is available here by default when we use the authorized or when we uh, make sure that the user is authorized. And uh, now here we can, in essence, do that as well here in the user service. So here we've got user identity name, for instance, or again, another way would be user and then find first value and then claim types and then name. All right, with that, we now get our name. And in the end, let's just return our results. All right, and now in our controller, instead of doing all that, here we also add our user service. So read only I user service call this user service and inject that thing here. All right. And now here, what we can do is we just return. Okay. And then now user service get my name. We can uncomment that stuff here actually. And this now hopefully should be it. We start the application. Do we still have the token? Not sure about that. Nope, of course not. So let's just register one more time with a Joel. And we log in with a Joel. We get our JWT. And in here now, Vera. execute and we get the name. Isn't that nice? So with that now two ways, first, just the controller, or if you want to use a better practice, make all that a bit more readable and maintainable and separate the concerns, decouple the stuff a little, then you want to use a service like that. And to be able to use the claims, then you definitely want to inject the HTTP context accessor and return or do anything you want with the claims then. Now make sure to also watch the other videos regarding JWTs if you haven't already and there's definitely one more coming up. So stay tuned and thank you very much for subscribing and liking this video. Hope to see you next time. Take care.